I'm going to move on a little bit. I'm going to get, we're going to get more into kind of talking about maybe more of the sales kind of part of things, maybe how to, how to approach surgeons. So these next questions are going to be kind of more of the, um, you know, how to approach and, and how to have discussions on different topics. All right, Jan, question. Do you use what you use because of the technology service, rep service, or is there something else? Wait, can you repeat that again? Yeah. Do you use like what pro the products that you use or the, the technology you use in surgery? Are you using that because of the technology rep service, or is there something else that influences what you use for a case? Yeah, almost all the above, uh, I would say in terms of, I do re, you know, especially I'm at a teaching institution and in our today's climate, not only a teaching institution, we have a lot of travelers and so forth. So I think the reps have become much more, um, you know, part of the team. I would say they were always been part of the team, but now with so changeover, they're consistent. And I think they're probably the most consistent people in the OR sometimes. So, you know, the, the service aspect of the, you know, the implants and so forth is, is very important, both to the team, like the, the CST in the room, the residents, everybody else, just making sure everything is prepared and ready to go for a case. Um, and then, you know, so, it, sometimes it is also then that technology as well. Uh, you know, if I'm doing some type of non-standard case, uh, then I would say the technology comes in second. Uh, but, uh, you know, if it's say if it's, for example, it's an just a and it's just say a standard ankle fracture. I mean, I think then it's based on like, okay, are the reps there? Do they have the stuff ready? Um, are their trays ready? Yes. Okay. I mean, because, you know, a lot of one third tubular plates from most companies are basically the same. So I think you forgot one thing that I think has influenced, at least, you know, when you start out and that's where you train and what you use when yeah. you train. Uh, I, I think... And, and maybe you all know this, but that is a big influencer, at least for me, you know, when I first came out and this is maybe a long story, but it, you know, I was doing some hip and knee arthroplasty and a lot of what I chose to use was what is what, you know, Dr. Truesdale used and, uh, Dr. Cabanella and, uh, Dr. Taunton. And it just is what I was familiar with because I felt comfortable with that particular system. Some of that might be rep related. Um, and, uh, you know, the su support that we got, but I think part of it was the experience you had during your training as well. So that's, I think that can be a big factor. Um, and then, you know, institution driven, you know, what's on contract that plays a role as well. Uh, and then as Jan already alluded to pricing, I think is going to play more of a role and man, we haven't even gotten into, uh, talking about, um, the different, some of the differences between, you know, how it, it functions at an academic facility versus your own, you know, privately owned ASC. That's, I think those are going to have much different feels. Uh, at least that's been my experience with it. That, that's a great point in terms of training. I mean, I think that's why you see a lot of, you know, residency training becomes so important um, and what's on contract at some of the bigger institutions, right? Because you, like you said, the familiarity is a huge thing where, um, I think later in practice, it's a little bit different, but uh, especially in the first years coming out, you develop habits and you trust uh, certain implants, you know, what's how it's going to act and behave. Yeah, that you can't underestimate that, like knowing how it's going to behave, you know, when you put this screw in at this trajectory, or it has this feel, it, it's so weird, but even just sometimes putting in something so simple as a screw, how much pressure you have to push to get the thing to engage can feel so different from one system to another, um, it always just kind of blows my mind how, how different some of those things can be. And yet they're the, basically the same thing. So, uh, a lot of, a lot of things that go into it. And I wish I could give you all like one silver bullet that you could use, but, um, uh, I, it, it, there, unfortunately there's multiple factors. Okay. Uh, Roth had a question, three characteristics that make a great rep. What do you guys look for? I think you touched on one and, um, uh, you know, this is what I, I've heard this question before. And this is the, I think the first thing that kind of comes to mind is reliability. And then I started thinking about, you know, the people that I've maybe had the best rapport with have been with you, with me in the trenches, like when things are tough and, and on the weekends or at nights or things like that. Um, 
And then what I thought was, you know what that ultimately leads to is trust. And that is probably at the end of the day, the single most important factor when it comes to working with somebody is that you trust them. And, you know, a lot of this is going to sound super like soft and squishy. Okay. So I'm just warning you, but you know, what I've been thinking about is even like as a physician or as a surgeon, like, you know, interacting patients, I mean, we're all, we're all basically in sales <laughs> together and we're not, I don't want to say, make it sound like we're selling, but we're, we're trying to earn trust of each other. And we're trying to earn trust of our patients and we're trying to earn trust of the staff that we work with. And so for me, that probably is the single most important factor characteristic that I looked at, that I can trust that when somebody tells me, hey, it's going to be there, I got your back, that it's going to happen. Um, Jan, any thoughts on that? No, I, I I would echo those statements. I think, yeah, you, you know, if you don't have something, say it, right? Just be honest about it. If there's something missing or and so forth, that comes with the trust part uh, because I think that's hard to rebuild. And, you know, I think it's okay if something is not there, you know, with the reps, as long as they, they tell me or tell and tell the OR like, hey, we, we don't have this or X, Y, or Z. And some of, some of the best reps that I've worked with, they know the competitor's products and they might be like, hey, Jan, man, we don't have this tonight or, or something, something's missing or, you know what, I looked at the fracture, you really need a longer plate. You know, the Synthes has a much longer plate than we have. You yeah. should probably, you know, they, they have it in house. Uh, you want me to call the rep? Yeah. And they've said that. And that just like means the word because like they, they're part of the team then, right? They, yep. They're going for the long game, not just that one sale for that case. They're, then my, I, you know, I'm always impressed when that happens, and I've, I've had it happen many times, which I think is a good thing because that means, you know, even though we're on sales, we we do want to take care of the patient uh, as well. So I think that's a a very good thing in quality to see. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I don't know if we got to three things, but I think that I think that summarizes things pretty well. Uh, okay, here's another question. I'm new to the industry looking to make an impact. I'm constantly studying and learning, but my knowledge base and experience limits the value I can provide in the OR. What are some ways that I can provide value to the staff and surgeons as well as develop a relationship of trust with the staff and surgeon? Any thoughts? Yeah. I have thoughts. <laughs> Who said that? It. I mean... You got to like write down what I want. You see me do it once. I'm going to do it again the same way. Like I position the patient supine with a bump. You know, this, this tray needs to be out. This tray needs to be out. And these clamps need to be out, whether they're your company or not, they need to be out. And if you can facilitate that in the operating room, you are my hero. <laughs> I think, I, I don't think you can echo that enough. Nothing um, drives me nuts when you've done something and they come back for, and it's whether it's a, you know, a rep or, or the, or the staff, but when they don't write it down, the, the people that I absolutely love are the ones that I, that write it down, have a notebook, have a system to remember all that stuff. I think that is very important. And, and I would echo that in terms of, cause I tell the residents to write it down all the time. And, but also the reps, I, I think, especially when there's a team from the same company that they share those notes. So even if Bob is covering one case and then Sarah does the next one with you the following week or whatever, that it, it's, it's as if it's a smooth transition. And I think that reduces everybody's frustration because like we, we repeat ourselves so many, everybody does uh, so many times. And I think that's just such, such a helpful trick to use like Google Docs or something like that and just write stuff down like, hey, he or she always takes C-arm from whatever side. And then when you're in the OR, you're a much more valuable player because someone's going to ask the nurse, oh, does he or she use C-arm? Where, where did they put C-arm? Oh, no, they put it on that side. Okay, thank you. Right? They appreciate you. You become an indispensable part of the team then. Yeah. There's a great book um, called The E-Myth, and it's very much, very much business background, but it is all about systems and processes. It's more directed towards businesses, but it is it is all of that. It is developing a system, developing a manual, developing a checklist of things that you work through for things that you do over and over and over again. And I think that that's gotten me thinking a lot about this as I've as we put this together. I think the tricky thing is for me for 
for us and for the reps is that the hospital upper echelon undervalues the reps. Like they're to the point where maybe they don't even need to be in the room. Yeah. And as surgeons, we're like, holy shit, they're the only consistent person in the room. (laughs) And so I feel like, you know, I, I've definitely a ball buster with my reps because I'm like, dude, you're the only person here who knows what else is going, what is going on outside of myself. Like my resident doesn't know the traveling nurse doesn't know the circulator doesn't have any clue about what we're doing. You and I are the only two people who have done this case before. And That's I think right. the reps need to, the, the reps need to recognize their value. Like, I think they're constant, they're kind of berated like, oh, you don't really mean you you know you bring the stuff in whatever no you are important you are important and and value that and you you know if you and i can create a relationship where you you and i understand each other and we are the two people in the room that know what's happening here and that's usually the only that's usually the case that i can trust you to help me out yep and I think that's why we, you know, put this on is to understand what we're thinking as we go through these different cases and, and talk through them so that you can tell what we're looking at, what we're thinking, what kind of backup plan we might want to have. And um, it just gives you more experience, more of a mastery of the of the content. What about knowledge base? Um, Jan, you might have thoughts on this with ortho bullets. Yeah, of course, I'm biased. I mean, I, so... I, I believe ortho bullets is going to be key for, you know, a lot of the education for this. I mean, we, we have even educational programs for reps uh, now, you know, so they have a curriculum and that they can get, you know, emailed daily uh, learning about, you know, basic, basic orthopedics and so forth. And, and I think that's just key to kind of know the language. And I think it, part of it takes time, but part of it does take, you know, a, training, right? You have to study up and and know some of the anatomy. I know some of the, you know, bigger companies will have, you know, certain rep training like rep 101. uh, And I think that can be helpful, but I think there's going to be a lot of people learn on their own, you know, through online like webinars or, you know, websites like OrthoBullets, uh, ViewMedi, or, you know, to name a few. Yeah, I agree. I think those are all helpful. And there's some social media accounts that are helpful to follow. Sometimes it's hard to kind of sort through those as well uh, to know who's reputable or who's blown smoke, but um, that, that's another great way to learn. Um, okay, what's the most annoying thing reps do? Man, this is dangerous. Bethany, I'm going to let you take this because I just feel <laughs> like you have to on this. Oh, yeah. I got yeah, it. See, I knew. I, I knew. <laughs> well, you can pay an attention. And the all the other thing I have, like, don't be organizing the screw situation when I'm exposing. I need the knife. I need the retractors. I don't need my rep off in the like la la land figuring out what screw I'm gonna put in. Like, we are so far away from that. I need help right now with what I'm doing. So, like, read the room. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I agree with that actually. I think sometimes like when there's all this like chatter in the background that um I think it can be frustrating for me. I mean, I think if they set up before the case it's one thing, but when we're going and then I'm you, you know, surgeons are asking like, "Hey, can I have mats? Can I have this? Can I have a retractor?" And you're like, "Can I have the retractor? Can I have the, you know, because the rep is talking and trying to set things up." I think you know, he or she, they they want things to go smoothly later on, but like you said, you don't need that plate and screws for a bit, right? You're still exposing and and so forth. The the one thing that I find sometimes frustrating is, and this is there, there's a gray zone, there's a fine line. If you try to sell too hard, and what I mean by that is just you, you know, tell me about your products. I'm I'm fine with it. I'll listen because I'm 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 an early adopter for many things. So like, if it makes sense to me, I may try it. But don't be like, this is the greatest thing ever. We have all these stem cells and 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 so forth. And then, you know, I'll ask you a question about it. And it, it just, if you're trying too hard, just kind of just give the information and just be like, hey, do you mind if I show it to you and so forth? I, I think I'm fine with that. But when someone's just trying to, 
I don't know, like you, you can kind of feel it. Like it, when someone's trying a little bit too hard um, to try to show you a product, it, it, it's not always worth it. You got to first gain trust and then be like, hey, do you mind if I show you this now? I know you, I know you like using X, can I show you why? And I, I will say yes. I mean, I, I don't say no unless I don't have time at that moment. Um, but I think it's a, there's a nice way to approach it as opposed to being just like, here it is. You need to use this. This is the best thing ever. I, I mean, it just that that's a red flag for me. Yeah, I think for me, it's um, it's it's those guys reading the room, and then it's I don't like when I'm in the midst of a case, I don't want to be tried to like sold something or try something new kind of thing. Um, I, I have a time and a place where I want to sit down and take a look at it, and I can put my you know, thought into it. Um, but during the case is probably not great for me. Now, there may be some surgeons that that's a great time, you know, maybe when they're closing, that's when they want to hear about things. I, I don't really know about that. But for me, if I'm in the middle of a case, usually when I get done, I'm like, I just want to like not think for a second. And, uh, you know, either I'm closing or, or take care of what, you know, the dictation. Um, but there, there is a time and a place to, to do that. So let's ask that question. What are the best ways for reps to approach new doctors or if you have a new product that you want to uh, show them. Yeah, I, th I think it's, you know, not during, a for me, it's not during a case. I think maybe for some people it could be, but I think there's too many distractions. And I think maybe, you know, after the case, almost like a rep debriefing. I know that some of the reps have done that to me. And I, I've, I've been, you know, especially if the case goes well, whatever you just did, you're in a much better mood um overall and just be like hey you know i know you see this i'm glad it went well um you know thanks for using us today hey by the way we do have this other thing i don't know if this is a good time to show you or not because i'm more likely to say yes if i've just done a case and it went well yeah right yeah, that's, just, that's anybody exactly right. is right if you just yeah. had a nice dinner you're more willing to have a conversation about you know about whatever, right? Um, not necessarily with a rep. I'm just saying in general, like you, if you're in a good mood, um, you're willing to be more open to, to other things. I think for for us, like at Vanderbilt and maybe some other academic institutions, like know if your shit is even allowed. Hmm. Like if it's not allowed, I can't look at it. And if it is, if it's not allowed, and you want me to look at it, it better be amazing, and it better <laughs> be so like different than anything else we have available and you better be able to tell me why it's so much better because I got to defend it I got to take it to a committee I got to go to meetings I got to go to blah 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 to get it uh, approved and I got to knock other things off the shelf because of it so you know really keep that in mind because it's well, like Vanderbilt's really strict about it yeah yeah they really are yeah and I think more places are like that Bethany I, I agree I mean I think you know, the first question I ask and the reps know it, I go, is it on contract? Because if it's not on contract, I still will like talk about it. But then I know like my head is going somewhere else. Is this actually a value add? If it's just another plate and screws, I'm going to be like, man, it ain't worth my time right now to add another plate and screws. But it's got to be something different. But if it's already on contract, my, you know, I'll be like, okay, let me see it. You know, maybe, maybe it's more useful. That's right. And really know it, like really know if it's on contract, don't blow smoke. Like I need to, cause I don't know. It's hard I don't to know if it's yeah. on contract, but, and then I'll use it and you'll tell me it's on contract and then it's not. And then who gets the backlash of that? Yeah. You know, so really you gotta know, you gotta know. Um, okay. I had a question here that was um, top three books you'd recommend for medical device consultants to grow their career. I'm not sure. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts, Jan or Bethany, on books that you would recommend? I have a couple thoughts, but. No, I mean, I don't know what books that would be, you know, relevant. I think some, that's why I'm saying like, I think online resources, whether it be some of the social media accounts, that go over things um, or, you know, obviously I'm going to say orthobolts again, biased, of course, view Medi, not biased and don't like them, but uh, you know, things like that, I think can be helpful uh, and I, to provide some of the education. And, and I know some of the companies are trying to get better and I really educate their reps. I think that there's been, you know, they have, you know, education managers and so forth now 
uh, I think almost every major company does because they want their reps to know the product very well. And I think that has been a, you know, big improvement over the last few years. Yeah. So, so I would say like outside of, I mean, those are all awesome. And that, that's certainly where I would focus your energy, but like, there, I mean, there's some leadership books that are good. Like I like the trillion, the trillion dollar coach. Like it's, I mean, there's that's, some leadership books that are really good about how to read the room and how to, how to talk to people, how to talk to people. And I think that would, that's something to int- to kind of introduce and read. Yeah. So I have three, I have three that I thought about and, and they're all probably similar vein, but the first one is mindset. Um, I think it's a really good book. And, and I think that's kind of no matter what, but just like in terms that, you know, change, like understanding what your mindset is, because I think it changes how you approach things. And then um, the other one is uh, never split the difference by Chris Voss. I think that's a great book for like what Bethany was saying, how to read the room, how to approach a conversation. Um, it, and basically kind of this idea of like negotiating things. Yeah. How to win friends and influence people is kind of a, a similar vein. And then the other one is the, the one I met, mentioned before, the E-Myth. And just because it talks a lot about a systems and processes, it's actually relatively entertaining to listen to, which could be a very dry topic, uh, but kind of gets you thinking about some of those, those systems and processes that you could set up amongst your own distributorship uh, uh, you know, to, to try to help make it seamless from when you go from one, one rep to another with a diff, you know, with that same surgeon, you can have a lot of those processes set up that would be pretty seamless, especially with like technology and stuff with, with pictures and that kind of stuff. Um, Zachary asked about limit the reps you have in the room and use a less confident product. Or are you okay with multiple reps in the room for different hardware options? I'll, it depends on what the case is for me. I'll, you know, I try to limit it to one particular company. But um, if there's something I need from the other from another company, I'll I won't I'll use them both. Uh, B- Bethany or Jan, your thoughts? So I'm the same way as you on that, Nick. And I'm, you know, I, I I said I try to limit the amount of people. Like I'm not going to just use another company just to use another company. But if it's something that's a value add for that case that they offer, I, I think it's very you know reasonable to have them you know in the room, and I thankful for them. Yeah, I would agree. I, I try to like use one company if I can, one company at a time if I can. And if I don't dislike their product that much, I'll use it if it, you know, lines up with the rest of the case. So yeah, I try uh, to reduce traffic because traffic is bad. <laughs> uh, yes, try to limit the traffic. I agree. Um, and then Colin asks some of your favorite publications, you know, for, for, I think what you're doing, I, I would think a lot about the technique publications, um, you know, what there's the master techniques in all the different orthopedics that, um, you know, subspecialties that have a lot of technique driven, um, chapters. So any of the books that have ch- you know, that focus a lot on technique, I think are probably very helpful. There's technique journals uh, that you can, you know, depending on what your access is. Uh, so I think those are, those are, those have been helpful for me through my training. Uh, any other thoughts on publications, Jan or Bethany? No, but I think some of the, like you said, the technique videos, um, I would go with not only journals, but the videos. So you kind of have an understanding of how the, maybe the case is done, uh, because, you know, obviously you can look at a technique guide and so forth, but it's very hard to maybe see what the surgeon, what he or she is doing. So sometimes those videos can be helpful just yeah. to give you, you know, an understanding more, uh, you know, about uh, what's going on, uh, you know, closer up to the field. 